Good morning, monkeys. Welcome to another episode in our RCT Classic Scenario Series here at Coaster Monkey Studios. In this episode, we're going to be wrapping up our Forest Frontiers Scenario here. I'll uh, just give you a little uh, background on this particular series. Again, for those of you that are just joining us, this particular series is all about how to fulfill the expectations within each scenario of RCT Classic and then go beyond that goal and continue to build and create an actual theme park or amusement park or whatever we're doing in this particular that particular scenario. So here we are just picking up where we left off. Um, as you know, in our last episode, if you joined us, if you haven't had a chance to see it, uh, you can definitely check out the link on my page. But this area here we had just built out this log flume we did some minor theming and now what we're doing is we're building out the station house for it and uh for this particular build my intention i started out very light but again the whole idea was you know the first iteration of the first ride we did was you know the junior ride in the very front of the park and that junior ride you know thinking about uh you know this amusement park as it first started out right it has this junior ride it's got a couple of flat rides and then it goes let's say the 1970s and then we get this really cool wooden coaster and then come the early 80s and arrow comes along and we've got this amazing log flume that gets built up and with that arrow log flume we do some minor theming get it minor minor mining <laughs> okay uh sorry i won't ever do that again I'm not going to promise that. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. So we have some minor theming that we do here um, to just increase our excitement level and just have some fun with this. You know, I went with a very mine theme feeling. Obviously, it's a log flume, but I wanted it to feel like a, a, a logging mill, if you will. Um, if you've ever been to Six Flags Great Adventure and you go over to their mine train area where they got the mine train, they have their log flume, there's the giant teepee. Um, it's their Western uh, themed area. This building is very reminiscent and this is where I get a lot of the feeling from it. Uh, there's the wrought iron walls that you see there, or not wrought iron, the corrugated iron walls. And then we've got uh, simple brown base blocks that go in as well as black fencing, wooden fencing. And again, to give a very rustic feeling to this particular area of the park especially to go along with the Ferris wheel and then we get the pirate ship just over there. Both of which, again, go with the whole amusement park feel, All right? Not theme park, amusement park. But uh, I'm gonna let this build go on for just a couple minutes here. And then when we come back, I will give you a little insight of what's gonna be going on on the channel in the next couple of weeks. Some exciting news is going on. So hang out and I'll be back in a little bit.
All right, so as we're wrapping up this building station here, uh, some really good stuff uh, happening on the channel in the next couple days. So I definitely want you guys to be privy to what's happening. Obviously, we're gonna be starting our second scenario on Thursday. This Thursday, we'll be dropping the next scenario, uh, which is gonna be a surprise. We're not gonna go in order of the list, but yeah, we're gonna drop another scenario this weekend, or this week on Thursday, and start that scenario. Uh, we also are going to be heading out to Great Adventure. Um, as I pause, hold on, take a look at that. How great does that look with all that foliage, all of that uh, tree work put in there, all that nature work. Absolutely love what we did and how that came out. Again, think 1980s, Arrow comes along with this awesome log flume and we steam it out because we want to create a line and we got a massive line there and draw some great traffic in. Now. As we were staying in one of our previous episodes for this area here, we're going to be doing similar to what Dollywood does. And we're going to create a little Western town here that the train's going to travel through. And we're going to have, you know, again, this is obviously because we don't have entertainers to put in, but we're going to have little actors in here that are going to be doing like a bandit cops and robbers type show, uh, which would be pretty cool. But that's what the train does through there before it heads back over into its station. Uh, so we're going to continue this build out while I tell you what's going on in the channel here. So like I was saying, you know, we're going to be heading out to Great Adventure this weekend. Obviously, due to uh, concerns with the current state of the world, the park itself is not open. But what we've got going on here is going to be uh, the safari. There's going to be the drive through safari. A bunch of friends and I are going to be heading out to the safari. We're going to do the drive through um uh, set up with the reservation system. I'm going to walk you through all of the processes uh, that they've got going on. I'm going to give you as much insight as I can on what's going on in the world of Six Flags uh, at the current juncture and kind of what's happening with what's going on in the world. So stay tuned for that. That'll be coming. We're going to be going there this coming Sunday. So you can look at that at some point next week. Uh, we're going to edit that video in. But yes, it's the first actual vlog of 2020. Who is excited for that? I am so stoked. Uh, it's going to be great. CJ's Crazy Coaster Crew is getting together. We're all going to be going out to uh, Six Flags, Great Adventure, and Safari. Um, all right, cool. So as we move back into the build here, you see we're just building out these facades, right? They're just facades. That's all they are um, because they're set pieces that our train just passes through. And that's the whole intention. Again, uh, we want it to be very light, very cool, nothing too crazy. Um, similar to what Dollywood does. Like I said, you drive through that train, it stops midway, and there's a huge shootout between a cop and a robber, uh, or a, a, a sheriff and a bandit, um, if you will. But yeah, I'm going to let this continue on, and I will get back to you in a moment. Check you guys in a bit. All right, so as we move on from our train area, here we are building out the last area of our um, Forest Frontiers amusement park. And this is gonna be one of the classics, throwback to Blackpool Pleasure Beach. 
where they had uh, a wooden wild mouse, which they, they just recently, uh, in the past year, two years, excuse me, uh, you know, took down from the park. Apparently it was a very crazy, very chaotic, very aggressive ride. Um, high intensity, it was not for everybody. But uh, as I look at this ride that I built out here, you know, uh, it's it's built with the intention of having that same feeling that Blackpool Pleasure Beach has, right? Where it's got this massive structure it puts up uh, of this wild mouse. It's, it's, you know, at that point it was one of a kind uh, when they took it down. It was the last remaining one of its style. Oh, and we had a rollback there. You saw that, right? <laughs> do go back and do a little bit of editing here. But... Yeah, so again, we wanted to throw something in that was very reminiscent to the amusement park feel. Um, and that's what we did. I think we did a very successful job at it here uh, by having it work with the terrain a little bit. We did a little bit of terrain editing and then threw in very minor theming. Uh, again, when I say theming, I have used the term very loosely. Uh, and what I mean by that is structural. Right, uh, you have a building for the station. We've got some structural pieces that go around the actual coaster itself uh, that give it a little bit of depth. Like you see there, we've got those supports that are floating in midair, right? So we're gonna come back. We're gonna throw some supports all along there. All along there, we do a really great. I love what I did here. You know, a full open roof for the station. Again, a super simple station, right? Um, and that's the whole idea, you know, we, this is a theme park that doesn't have a lot of budget, right? They've got enough money to put the coaster up with the building, you know, and, and that's your amusement right there. It's not a theme park. And that's what I want to, I want to make sure I'm very, very, very clear about again, when building out these different parks as I do this, right? So for this park, it's an amusement park. The next park, uh, we're going to have a little bit of a higher budget to play with, quote unquote, right? Uh, so we've got a minor theme that's gonna go in for its bigger rides, right? Now, so when we think of things like that, we think of like what we did with the log flume, right? Where we've got the ride that comes in and we do massive theming around it because that's like this signature, quote unquote, signature ride of the park, right? At that time. So uh, I can't wait to get Leafy Lake started uh, for you guys to see that. I've, I've, I've already, I'm already about two or three videos ahead uh, and that video will be released this Thursday for Leafy Lake. Um, and I'm so excited to show that to you guys. It'll be really cool. But yeah, so we put in this wooden wild mouse. Uh, now, what's crazy, a good factoid about the wooden wild mouse, it runs with no brakes whatsoever, right? So you've got to be able to play those G-forces the right way so the lateral G-forces don't completely kill your ride. Uh, and that's a very important factor to know about the wooden wild mouse when you are building it. Now, you see me putting in some path work here. I, I, I mess around with this quite a lot in this, this uh, particular portion of the video. So I'm trying to figure out exactly what I wanted to do, how I wanted to go. I wanted to fit another couple flat rides in here, which I wind up doing, you'll see what those are in a moment. Two quintessential flat rides, in my opinion, for an amusement park and kind of what you would see in a smaller budget family amusement park in comparison to a theme park. And I just couldn't figure out how to get it to fit. And then it clicked. Watch what happens. Ready? Three, two, no, maybe not. Not yet. <laughs> oh, this is, I forgot to raise the price of the wild mouse. That was number one. Number two, we named the wild mouse. That was such a cool idea on how I did it. Watch what I did. First off, we named it Mousetrap. Love it. It looks like a giant mousetrap. And then I was toying with the idea of how I was going to do it. And then I realized that you know, we've got all these great pieces that I don't think I ever use, to be honest with you, a lot of these signs and stuff. So I build up this huge tower and I mean, it just looks like a giant cage. And, and that's really what I wanted to go for with the idea of the mouse trap. But all right, so going back to the path work. So I figured out the path work and kind of how I wanted it to look. This is what, it, what happens here. And uh, I wind up redoing this whole queue here. And I do super fast speed. Don't pay any mind to the bad behind the curtain moment. Um, <laughs> but I wind up changing the path, the queue here quite a few times. Again, with rides that are single rider like this one, 
you don't need two riders, you gotta be very careful with the length of your cue because it could actually diminish the satisfaction of your ride, right? In real life, you don't enjoy a ride as much if the wait time doesn't justify the ride. I could think about quite a few of those, but one that stands out the most would probably be Viper at Six Flags Great Adventure when it first opened. Um, I mean, the ride was less than 30 seconds, you know, and, and we waited, I remember going, I waited two hours for that ride. Like, what? You know what I mean? But here we are, um, keeping in mind, so you keep a shorter queue for a ride that doesn't have a, a very high throughput and you actually increase its satisfaction. It's something to note uh, for when you're playing this game in the future. But here we are just building out a nice little footbridge to go over our train here. Uh, I fiddled with this one a little bit too, but uh, I wound up coming up to a really great solution and I liked it a lot. The footbridge is an extension. I made the footbridge an extension of the building, which I thought was pretty cool. A uh, pretty cool idea uh, overall. A little bit of a flub there with the spacing, but uh, I figured it out in the end, which, you know, I think I'm happy with, uh, I would say for the most part. Wow, that, that pond really does look great, huh? Sorry, total ADD moment. All right, so now that we've got uh, those little areas in there, all sorted out, uh, we throw in obviously a Dodgems because we always need bumper cars, all right? But again, we have the queue issue. So I wound up just minimizing the queue all the way down uh, and, and just simply cover it over, you know, very easily or very simply, I should say. Again, this is a budget park, right? It's a budget family park, so we're not looking for like anything major, you know, as far as um, seeming or built, you know, super buildings or anything. Like, look at how easy that was, boom, 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 boom. Right, now that's honestly what you see, and you know, I can think of like nobles, for instance. You know, very simple, very simple structure. But here we are putting in our, uh, Bumper cars uh, made this fun, a little bit, you know, toxic -y, like electric neon -y looking, which was fun. And again, another great tip, you know, you could raise the time that the, the cars are on the, on the electric path to three minutes. So that's three minutes of wait time, uh, or quote unquote 30 minutes uh, in their perception, the perception of our little peeps, right? And for this other side, we put in a nice little slide uh, again, and then uh, do some garden work around it. Super simple, small, casual rides, right? Nothing too out of uh, control, right? Because we want to make sure that we're you know, kind of sticking to this whole budget theme, if you will, right? And you're just throwing in some last minute trees there. And there we are. There you have it, guys. That is our, that's our park. Look at that. We started this four episodes ago, uh, and I'm super proud of, of how it came out. I mean, and that's the full footprint of the park. Every piece of land is bought. Every piece of land is used. So there we are with our first coaster. Uh, there, the fairy flight. And then we've got Phant uh, Phantasmagoria. We've got Grease Lightning up over there. Uh, we've got our train station here. Then we've got our log flume, which I just realized I did not name. No! I'm going to have to go back and name that. We've got our It's a Small World inspired food court there, which I love. And then we've got our mouse trap uh, ride over in the corner with our little uh, train ride that goes all the way out there with the show. Uh, yeah, right. So I hope you guys enjoyed uh, this episode. Glad you're sticking with the series. If you like what you see here, you know, there's a subscribe button that's about to pop up. Click on that subscribe button and catch you guys in the next, next episode where we hit up Leafy Lake and we learn how to not only beat that scenario, but we um, theme it out. Uh, all right, guys, enjoy. Have yourselves an amazing day. Catch you later.